So before anything else, this did work with my video that I had recording using OBS on Dishonored 2. And it uses the common H.264 video codec, AAC audio codec, 1080p resolution, 60 frames per second. However, it might not work necessarily for you. If that does ever happen, you can check out other YouTube videos, Blackmagic forums, or the forum where you basically used to encode this video. Now, it's worth a shot. Uh, personally, it wasn't worth on mine, but this is what led it to me working these steps so we can proceed. So this recording, it bugs me because as soon as you seek the video, see, it already shows a media offline error, like even before you import. Like no matter how much you do with it on Resolve, whether it's imported to the media pool, pool rather, or added to the timeline, it shows this error. And the thing here is, when you do play it on VLC, there is an odd glitch that that running glitch where it's color white and just blocky and it happens no matter where you seek on the video but it's not actually part of the video here we're gonna show you see that see that rather six seconds when you start the video yes there's this always starting glitch but when you actually play the video from start to finish it doesn't have the error so that's the same scene without the glitch so there is a way that we're going to still make it as mp4 still the same codecs and all without quality loss and put it on resolve we're going to use two tools we are going to use mkv toolnix and gpack so i have already downloaded these i have them prepared on these two locations the links will be at the description so basically i already have them and just note where they're saved that's the most important thing so once that's done, also make sure to note of the video frame rate. And we're going to get to MKV Toolnix. We're going to run this. Basically just drag and drop the video or add it as a source file and start multiplexing. Note where it's saved. I'll save it on the same drive where it, the original video is. So what Muxing does is just basically copying the video and audio codec file as it is. Playing it back, you will immediately notice the glitching still happens. Don't worry, this is going to be disappearing soon. But for now, once it is noted where the file is, or the MKV MUX file is, we're going to proceed back to where the MKV Toolnix was originally installed. So you're going to create two text files, so one for this and one for GPack. So first here, I have it already prepared as well. And I'm using Notepad++ to show it here, but you can use any other text editing tool like Notepad, just plain old Notepad. So the format is as shown. Basically, the location of the MKV extract executable tracks the location of the MKV most file we did earlier. And these will represent the two separate files basically we just separate the mkv file into a video file based on the codec audio file based on the codec so you will save it as a dot bat file a batch file so if we demonstrate that we save it as something like bat so you can just use any format any name it doesn't matter as long as you have it either saved on the same location where you had the installer or you can save it anywhere, but then just change the MKV extract exe into the location of the file. You have to use codes so that there's no issues with spaces. So this will work just the same. So we have the video file, the MKV MUX file here, saved on the I drive. So we're going to put that in. You can do any name of the video and audio file. Now, the reason why there is a zero and one is to identify which part of the, sorry about that typo. So you're gonna use the split, sorry. Basically, you're just gonna identify the tracks. And 
media info helps here. This is an optional tool, but normally it's just zero and one. It's just basically the counting starts at zero, then one, then two. Usually most video encoding tools will be straightforward about that. But if you do ever find like an unusual video recording tool that somehow changes this, the ID, then you can check it out on media info. You can download and install it. It's also straightforward. And then you can correct that. So in this case, you will notice earlier, that it's set at one to two, but in the case of MTV extract, it starts at zero. So you will use, you just basically subtract one. So once you have that running, you can just run it, run it at where it was originally saved. Now, just keep in mind, you can also save these files anywhere, like do the same location thing. But in my case, I will run it directly here. So once it's directly ran, you will see the two video files made, sorry, rather the video and audio file made. If you test it, it will play back. You will hear sound. If you test this the video codec. Now, yes, there will be some concern with frame rates. Do not worry. We're going to adjust that later. It's just important that we confirm it does work. So next is GPack. Find where it's installed and we're gonna make a different batch file. Same, similar method as before. In this case, this is the format as shown. So I have also saved it on the same location where the installer was. Now here, from here, we'll test this time the method where we're gonna copy the location and just have the name of the actual file at hand. So what we'll actually need with GPack to be specific is the MP4 box feature, since that is dedicated for uh, muxing MP4 files. And here on the format, you'll notice it will link to the location where the video and audio codec were saved. This is important. It's important that we set the frame rate to the original one it was set to so that there is no issues when it comes to muxing that there is like incorrect variable frame rate and such it will remain constant because as you can see the original video was constant 60 frames per second so we're going to save it anywhere so this honored to mp4 we're going to run it for whatever location you have saved it from in my case it's here just wait for a moment. We'll be done. Save on the location where you put it in. in. My case, same location as the installer. So here, yes, I have already tested this before to confirm that it works. So in this case, that Resolve 2 was the one we saved. And this time, if you put it, it on Resolve directly, it will see just fine. It works just fine. I, if we even put the file on the timeline, it will also work fine. Let's delete that just to confirm. Oops, sorry about that. Should have not done that. So here, there you go. It works just fine. And you'll see here that the attributes are all correct. Also 60 frames per second. Now, I noticed that this specific method is annoying because the fact that you need to do this at all. But yeah, it does has worked from my experience. And if you do deviate from these steps uh, from testing, it just doesn't work. And here's, here's I'm going to show a couple of examples. We're going to start with, since MP4 box can handle MP4 files, and this file is an MP4 file, right, already? Why not just re-add it using MP4 box? I've tried it, it doesn't work. Like we can try it here. So I will use, so you can add the video as it is. You can actually just add the video just as it is, as it is, sorry. And then have it set here directly. If you run it, basically, it 
doesn't work. I mean, technically the encode, of course, will work perfectly. It will work just fine. But if you actually put it on the media pool, it still shows the media offline error. Now, if I do use MKB Toolnix, if you just like have the MKB Toolnix files, like these files that were generated as it is, yep, Resolve just doesn't bother at all importing them. They just are not responding. Now, there is an alternative. You can actually use FFmpeg, but it's not as straightforward as it is. I have it here. It's the static build from FFmpeg Zeranoi, the latest one, and it's not straightforward. The thing is, if you use here, if I use the MP4 to MP4 copy, like this is the syntax sorry this is basically the method that you will use to copy audio files so ffmpeg is also capable of muxing files to another container however if you try this out it just still doesn't work like it has the media offline error as demonstrated here it does it well so yeah ffmpeg is of course well known i use it a lot when it comes to encoding videos to h264 and h265 using x264 and x265 but in this case, the output here, it doesn't work by itself. It also has the media offline error. Now, if I use the MKV tool mix, the most MKV here, and use that instead on FMPEG, it technically works. Like, I'll demonstrate here. Sorry, I just got distracted by a bit. So you run it while well, I also have it prepared already, but you know, just to show that it does work. Like, just to show it does work. So MP4 to MP4 copy. So yeah. So yeah, you will also notice this is the outputted MKV from the MKV source file rather. You will notice something different already. Frame rate. Frame rate has not stayed constant. It has been variable. Unlike the MP4 to MP4 pure encoding, sorry, direct copying rather. For some reason, when it comes to MKV to MP4 muxing, there's this valuable effect and there's no other changes that I made to the command. I've done a couple of commands to force the FPS, but because it's a copying the stream, the filters don't work. Now, this does work and as evidence, if we put it on the resolve timeline, Yep, there is no seeking error. However, you can't immediately put it on the timeline. You will notice on the clip, attri clip attributes that it's not completely set to 60. See, it's 59.94. You can set it to 60, you can click OK, and technically it will work just as well. It will work just as well, as you can see here. But the fact that you still have to go through that extra step of uncertainty, I personally feel like I want to have a consistent record. Like if it's the original recording is 60 frames per second, I just want it straightforward 60 frames per second, not having to worry about that value later on. I'm, as far as I know, there shouldn't actually be many major effects, but still. So I look forward that this does help. And even if otherwise, I still look forward that you have a better exp experience with Resolve eventually. I admit that I'm just starting out myself. I did use to use Sony Vegas and I'm trying to move forward with this tool and it has quite a lot of quirks like the, these but and also the learning curve is a little difficult but uh, we're getting there so you can feel free to leave comments on how it's how it's been with Resolve as well I'm actually curious to see how it is and we'll see more in the future if there will be any. Thank you, and goodbye as well.